So good morning, each and every one of you. I just want to welcome you to the ELLC this morning, the month of April. It's um it's a season where we look at the round table. We're looking at the topic this morning on the whole aspect of growing in spiritual leadership. It's interesting to know that growth is very important and spiritual leadership is important even in our personal life. With me this morning is Jim from England, but working in Germany. And Sandra from Switzerland, working in Lausanne. And Eric from Nigeria, working in Germany. And as we deliberate this morning on the round table, I just want to encourage us. It's a season where the material is available for us within the ELLC that we can listen, learn, and grow in. And um, as we deliberate, I want to encourage us, let's keep coming back to listen to this so that we also can be a blessing to others. So this morning, Jim, what are some of your thoughts about what you, the materials you've gone through and your personal thoughts on the whole aspect of growing in spiritual leadership? Well, thanks, Francis. Um, I really enjoyed listening to the uh, videos, watching the videos, also reading the articles. You realize that it's a massive, massive topic um, and it's just a kind of scratching the surface, but I, I really enjoyed it. And I also enjoyed how um, there was the the core values of YWAM were kind of woven into all of the different, you know, the different presentations, the articles and things, knowing God, hearing God's voice, worship, um, do first, then teach, um, living, working in teams. Um, you could see all of that. Um, so I, I think for me, one of the things that really um, challenged me was to think of spiritual leadership as, as not just leadership of a base or a church or a team but it's a really different type of leadership from worldly leadership um and it's um and a lot of things came out from from that from the different people i liked what liam was sharing particularly when he was taking through us through the different um ways of understanding your unfolding gifts and callings especially i liked it because I, I could relate to his story with floyd floyd mcclung for i'm pretty sure most people will know floyd um have my own story with floyd where when I was um, I was just a Christian, I got a cassette tape. Do you guys know what a cassette tape is or was? Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> and um, Floyd gave a message at my church. And I wasn't there, but I got this tape and it, and it just blew me away. It was just the presence of God was just so powerful. I, I kind of thought, how can you not become a Christian when you listen to this kind of a message? And many, many years, years later, I was in a meeting and Floyd was, it was the first time I ever saw or heard Floyd. And he stood up at the front and I was kind of thinking, is, is it going to be like, you know, the tape? And he stood up and he said, good morning, isn't Jesus wonderful? And it was just like the presence of God, you know, it was so amazing. And um, and what uh, what Liam was saying was that, you know, he met Floyd and he was kind of modeling his life in Floyd, which is his first point in understanding your, your gifts and callings, which is imitation. And then he realized, and he said this to Floyd, I realized I don't want to become like you. And I thought that was very interesting. Um, there's something really important about imitation and mentoring and, and following somebody, but we're called to be who God wants us to be. And we're not supposed to try and be somebody else. Um, and not so much about character, but it's about callings and about giftings. Um, and so I think that's a key point. Um, one uh, that Liam was sharing about imitation, but then moving on to clarification and beginning to understand what our gifts are. And, and I, I liked what he said as well, that um, we can't discover self-fulfillment through our gifts and our leadership roles. And that's really important. I think often we want to be in leadership and we want to achieve something, but actually it's it's a, it's a process of um, realizing that it's that's not where our identity comes from. We shouldn't find our identity in being a leader. Keith Warrington one time said to me, um, asked me if I'd consider um, being involved in the leadership in Hulach in the castle. And I didn't want to, because you know, we were doing lots of stuff with DTSs and things like that. And um, and he said, I think it would be good for you. It would broaden your experience. It would broaden you as a leader. And it was it was just so true that growing in leadership, uh, spiritual leadership, is is learning to serve and to to sacrifice sometimes even your your what you really want to be doing and in, in your vision for a moment or for a time in order to encourage and lift others up. And in that way you broaden and you grow. And then finally, um, Liam talked about personification, whereas we really be, we become the message. And it's not like, um, you know, and I felt often that God was saying to me, the message is in you, that it's it's grown in you over time and just bring it forth. And um, 
did a debrief with Virens and Francisca uh, Hornster in the Black Forest um, a few years ago, which is really, really helpful, talking about the calling journey. There's a book by Tony Stoltzfus, if you've come across it, where you look at your valleys and your mountaintops that you go through life. And the goal is really to end up with what they call com convergence, where your failures and your successes, where your gifts and, and your strengths and your weaknesses all come together into walking in that which God is calling you to do. Um, and living it naturally in, in an authentic way. Um, so that's certainly what I got out, of, especially what Liam was sharing, I found very, very helpful. Thank you very much, Jim. I remember what Steve Mayer said. Steve Mayer said something. He said, Wyoming is a very um, driven organization. And one of the things is that we're very visionary. At the same time, we have the challenge of being workaholics. But at the same time, there's this call that uh, before we can uh, make him known, we have to, he has to be known to us first. Mm -hmm. So I think one of the things is, you know, in the whole aspect of spiritual or growing in spiritual leadership is, do we really know him ourselves before we start allowing what we know to be made known? So Sandra, what, what do you think? What's, what's uh, some of your thoughts? Yes, I um, really enjoyed just listening to the or watching the videos and also reading. Um, for me, it really just brought understanding more like what is actually spiritual leadership or how do we growing it. Um, I think for me, like I always thought that well, spiritual leaders are leaders who like lead prayer meetings and who are like worship leaders, just do these spiritual things. <laughs> um, but then just like watching Miranda's video, um, she really highlighted how it starts with ourselves. Um, like spiritual leadership, yeah, starts with ourselves, our own relationship with Jesus. Um, and from that place, it moves into a community, like leading other people. Um, and what do we lead them into? Hopefully to Jesus. <laughs> and kind of like, this is where everything starts um, with spiritual leadership. like we don't just want to lead them to anything or anywhere, but it's about Jesus. Um, that's where it starts, that's where it ends. And so I think for me, it was really interesting to kind of, yeah, meditate on that. It's like um, my growth with Jesus, like how do I live my life with him? Um, and the more time I spend with him, the more I just read the Bible, the more I worship, just getting to know him. Um, that also makes me realize um, the transformation I need um, to in order to become more like Jesus. Um, and just she also shared about um, letting the Holy Spirit convict us um, of things that we still need to grow in and need to be transformed in. Um, yeah, and out of that place of being vulnerable with God and letting him transform us, we can create that space for other people as well um, to just feel safe and feel, see Jesus through us. Um, see the love of Christ through us or in us and for me it was interesting like I'm a worship leader but also I'm leading a part of um, the admin work and so it's yeah for like a, as a worship leader of course I'm leading spiritually <laughs> hopefully I lead people to Jesus um, but then also on the other aspect how can I represent Jesus in the environment in the office um, and just like the way how I react with yeah react um so certain issues that come up or just stressful situations, um, am I really reflecting the love of Christ and like bring in his peace and carry his presence? Um, yeah, so that was really interesting to see. And also I liked um, Stephen's part that he wrote um, as a shared for me as a worship leader. I love being in the presence of God, um, cultivating the, the presence of God and just walking with him. Um, but also he mentioned that aspect of are we aware when the presence of God left, like he mentioned a few examples um, of people in the Bible who didn't realize that God's presence left. <laughs> and just reflecting on my own life, like, yeah, sometimes there are moments where I'm not aware that God left, but just seeing how I live in like stress or worry or just being anxious and tired. It's like, yeah, probably <laughs> I haven't really checked in and connected with God in this. Um, yeah, so these are just good reminders of Am I where, where God is? Or am I connecting with God? Um, and also just the importance again and again to take time with God 
Um, I think the more we grow in leadership and our responsibilities, um, yeah, we shouldn't neglect these times to just be with him and connect with him um, because that is where everything flows out of. Yeah, thank you very much, Sandra. It's interesting how the more we become responsible, the more the responsibility has the tendency to become the focal point instead of the person who gives you responsibility. And it's like what you said, Sandra, it's like, you know, sometimes uh, Samson did not know that the spirit of God had left. Joshua did not know that the spirit of God was not there. And in our contemporary day to day, there's a tendency to miss the point. We just keep moving, but not spending time with God. But the funny thing is that things still happen. <laughs> That's an interesting thing. And it's interesting that even in the whole aspect of spiritual leadership, that it's not just in a ecclesiastic domain that it functions alone, but it's also like Jamie said, it also functions out of not just the church, not just uh, what, what about a family? What about a politician? What about a wife? Uh, do we, do, how are we leading? Are we leading out of a place of love? Are we leading also out of a place of patience? Or are we leading out of a place of giving people space also to be able to speak in? Or are we just um, not recognizing is the spirit of God there or not there? So Eric, what do you think? What is your take on? Yeah. Um, I was really impacted by all the videos and the articles. Um, but one thing that I really um, enjoyed as I read through S Stephen Mayer's article is just the importance of being intentional in seeking the presence of the Lord. Yeah, He talked about when Waiwam was birthed during the Jesus revolution and uh, a mark of that movement was worship and how it's important for for us as leaders to have focused um times of seeking his presence and he, he talked about um some important points like time in his presence like moses you know even though he had a busy schedule he allocated time to just be with the lord and that is an aspect of also just growing in his leadership, just re recognizing that skill is not enough. Um, skill is important, but it's the marrying of skill and spiritual reality, the spiritual reality of dependence on the Lord. And so he talked about time in his presence and then um, just how Moses told the Lord, if you do not go with us, we wouldn't leave this place. Um, just that dependence on the presence of the Lord. Just Moses as a leader depended so much on the Lord. And I love the other point that he also brought about just with um, being carriers of his presence, how God wants to transform us from seeking his presence to being carriers of his presence. And as I also just meditated upon um, what impacted me from the videos and also from the articles, I was reminded of the story of David as a leader. David in 1 Samuel chapter 30 came back with his men from the battle of Ziglag and they discovered that his, their wives, their daughters and their sons were basically kidnapped. And the Bible says that they wept they were so distressed and they wept to the point that there was no more strength in them. And it got to the point where David as a leader faced the challenge. His men were talking about stoning him. But I loved what the Bible says. David, it says he encouraged himself in the, the Lord. As a leader, he did not criticize them. He was not angry about them. He he, he was not, um, yeah, um, frustrated with them. The Bible says he turned to the Lord. You know, as I meditated, I thought it would have been just wonderful if he had said, hey, guys, 
come, let's encourage ourselves in the Lord, <laughs> you know? But just seeing that, that importance of David as a leader, depending on the Lord, gaining strength from the Lord, and that was not enough. He now called Abiata the priest, and he said, um, bring the effort. And then he asked the Lord, Lord, should I pursue? Will I overtake? Will I recover? And the Lord said, yes, you can. So we see how David experienced natural success by reason of spiritual, um, the seeking of the Lord. And sometimes I call it gaining spiritual intelligence. So here was a situation where he needed wisdom from the Lord. And so, um, yeah, that, that was just something that just came to me as I meditated, how it's important for us to keep growing as leaders and also encouraging our community, not to forget the importance of this kingdom culture of seeking the Lord, being Christ-centered. I, I just love that. Everything as I read came back to this reality. Christ should be the center of um, spiritual leadership or growing in spiritual leadership. It's very interesting. I have a question. It's, it's a thought. It's a, it's a question of thought. Marinka said something, you know, Eric talked about Christ-centered and having everything centered in Christ. And one of the things she talked about the place of dryness, that even in the midst of dryness, and there's also a tendency to um, grow out of it or walk through it. So the question is, I mean, practically, how, in, in, when you look at the whole aspect, the two key points, the foundation is Christ-centered and love. But in the whole aspect of growing spirit, in spiritual leadership, in what ways would we say it's very helpful for an individual, personal, an individual's personal growth or personal life to be able to apply Christ-centeredness and love in their lives spiritually. What are your thoughts? Mm -hmm. Well, I think it's essential, isn't it, really? <laughs> if we're not yeah. doing that, then you can go home. <laughs> it's what it's all about. And a lot of it came out as well as that, um, you know, it's it's about community and 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 leading together and opening things up for the voice of the Lord and and, and God speaking to us. Um, Laura and Johan were talking about that, so that we, we, we hear from Him and and, and it's servant leadership. I think that's so key, isn't it? That we're serving and that it's not I'm kind of like an organigram. I don't know. Do you have organigrams? We have organigrams in Germany where you have this kind of triangle with the, you know, the big boss at the top. And it's not like that. Jesus says you shouldn't rule over like the world does. It's an upside down pyramid. It's it's serving. It's loving. It's it's loving Christ. It's loving loving one another. Um, so I think if we're not if if we're not living that as as individuals, if we're not following the the example of Christ and preferring others and loving Him and loving our neighbour, then yeah, we can go home. Yeah, I think as well. Um, I mean, it's lived out in community. <laughs> um, the community around us sees kind of like where you're at in your life or your walk with God. Um, but I think as well, like it starts um, just with your own heart. Like, are you opening your heart for God to correct you and like to transform you and to teach you more about what it means to love him, love yourself, love others? Um, and also just inviting Holy Spirit to to guide you, that just remind you um, where you maybe have missed it. It's not about Christ, but um, to invite Holy Spirit to just show you um how can I bring God's presence into my daily life? Um, and yeah, I think it goes back to also just spending time with him. Um, that's how you bring it into your life. Like you need to get to know Jesus more in order to live like him or become like him and have your life centered around him. Um, so it's that yeah, aspect of spending time with him, but also being with community, being in community, um, because we're not called to do life ourselves um but yeah we're doing it together wonderful yeah i think for me it's the aspect of um vulnerability also in community and how being vulnerable as a leader you still point people to christ 
and also in my communication. Um, because um when when I do communicate, does it still point people back to Christ? Or are people looking at me as a leader? You know, I'd rather that people see Christ in and through me. And so that aspect of Christ-likeness and um, yeah, just bringing everything back to him, you know, yeah. Yeah, it's very interesting where it, the scripture says, seek first the kingdom of God. It's interesting he said first, I would have been good if it, it'd be like, it would like be a different story if he said, seek the other things, then the kingdom. But he says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all other things. And to seek first the kingdom means spending time. Uh, there was an illustration given about a couple, a husband or the wife, they got so busy that they were not able to spend time with each other. And they said, because we're not able to spend time with each other, it was a very sarcastic way. They said their relationship will be very, uh, will blossom very well because they didn't spend time with each other. No, it wouldn't because they're not spending time with each other. They're not able to develop each other, nor understand each other or work with each other on a certain level of love. On a human position, on a marriage setting, time is important. Now to spend time, there's also there's a requirement for patience. There's also a requirement to listen. And sometimes it's very easy, you know, it's very easy to pray. Lord, do this A, B, C, D, E, F, G. But uh, the question is, do I spend time to listen to the one I spoke to? Do I spend time to hear what he has given me? And the second area is also, do I also create space to listen to others? You know, as a leader, is um, is how do we how do how do we love the people around us? Do we verbally say it, or do we actively say it? Mm -hmm. And I think one of the things about Jesus' disciples and the people around Jesus, they understood his love not by his words, but by his action. So here comes our last question: How do we love actively? today well i think the things you just mentioned <laughs> um to listen to people to um encourage them i think affirm them um to be patient with them if they need to learn things um but also to like create a space of um, asking for forgiveness but also um, like that it's allowed to make mistakes um, yeah to lay yourself down for others like giving up your time maybe you have tons of things to do but um, maybe someone else one that is following you or like in your team needs time to talk right now then maybe set those things aside and just take a moment to be present and um, not to rush through things um yeah these are a few thoughts wonderful wonderful yeah I, I think for me um one important thing is not only to hear people to really listen because sometimes i realize um i'm hearing but i'm not listening you know and so it's so important um as we l spend time with, with the people we are serving to really listen, especially to your hearts. Because sometimes it's the heart that I want to listen to and to really care, ge genuine care and love. Like she, she mentioned taking the time, you know, but um, are you really listening to the heart of people? Especially when people are going through a difficult time, are you taking the time to really understand what they are going through and not assuming. Yeah. And uh, yes. I think um, I once uh, heard of a pastor saying to another pastor, don't get too close to your congregation. And that kind of shocked me. You know, you need a little bit of distance. And I thought that doesn't sound like Jesus leadership to me. And I, I think one of the important things of loving people is, is being with them and, and knowing them and, and having friendship with the people that you're with and that you're leading. 
and as soon as we start thinking that we're different and you know we're you know we're in a different level or whatever I, th I think we're in a, a lot of danger it's it's really about relationship isn't it a lot is about relationship and caring for people and and developing friendships with with the people that we you know we're with whether they're our leader or we're their leader or we're in a team together um that's so, that's so important and there's different love languages so how do we love people well find out what their love language is you know if it's giving give them something you know if it's giving them a hug give them a hug um you know but it's relationship isn't it yeah yeah it's it's, it's interesting how self-reflection is very important especially when it comes to uh, laura and um Johan talked about it when it comes to a gathering or a community or a team and people are responding in ways that you wouldn't respond the way you would not respond. And sometimes uh, that could be very irritating for the person who might be leading, but also being reflective and saying, okay, even though I don't respond that way, am I open, like Eric said, am I open to listen to them? And what they're bringing on the table it's also, it's also important. And I think one of the things is, is uh, Jesus used a very perfect example. He said, as I have served you, so also serve. And he was about to depart and he wanted to wash the feet of the disciples. And Jimmy talked about servant leadership. And Peter, I like that guy, he said, no, you don't wash my feet, wash my head too. Now, and, and Jesus said, if, if I don't wash your feet, you won't be part of me. And I think that's one of the things about leadership. Uh, leadership is actually service. John Maxwell said, a leader is one that serves. It serves the people for the benefit of their own interest, trusting the Lord that he's using them to make a difference in their lives. And in Wyom, we as leaders first of all, have to lead ourselves. And I think that's one of the things where putting people in leadership when they have not been able to lead themselves is dangerous. And also taking a distance or being aback from the people you're leading is also dangerous because then you don't really, you're not, you're not working as Christ works. But I think the enjoyable part is that we can grow into so it's growing in spiritual leadership. And spiritual leadership is not just for base leaders. And I think that's one of the things that we're talking about here. It's not just base leaders. It's not just ministry leaders. It's not just worship leaders. It's not just prayer ministry leaders. And I think that's one of the things about, you know, as a leader, you cannot go, oh, you're the worship leader. The Lord bless you. Do your thing. I'll come in later on. But as a, as a spiritual leader, you need to provide oversight oversight and give a place of safety that even the worship leader knows that there's someone that is given a spiritual oversight of the things but that capacity only comes when we are embedded christ-centered when we're embedded in christ because that's the only way we can actually um, be able to fulfill the things that we've been called as leaders to do so as we close I just want to ask us, what are one personal nugget would you want to just um, give in the end, personally, to the listeners today? I would think for me, it would be um, when, it, when Jesus said, your will be done, not my will be done, um, that when we're, we're leading, um, we're not trying to push through our will. Uh, what, what our opinions are, what we want to do, but we're actually listening to his will um, and that we're seeking what he wants um, and his His agenda comes first. Thank you, Jim. Um, I think one of the things that really encourage um, people is to go back to this reality of knowing the Lord for themselves. Uh, it's um, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. It says, now the Lord is the spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. With unveiled faces, as we behold his glory, we are transformed into his image from one degree of glory onto another. So the reality is we are called to be transformed into his image. Let that be a pursuit, a hunger, um, something that 
it's precious and valuable every single day as a leader who is being transformed. Mm -hmm. I guess mine is very similar, but spend time with Jesus. <laughs> um, yeah, to just make time to be with him, um, to listen to his voice, um, to let him transform you and just also be okay with where you're at. Um, just like against comparison, you don't need to compare your journey with God. Um, he's walking with you individually. And so, yeah, walk with him hand in hand. Thank you very much. I think one of the joyful parts is, you know, as we have heard today, the ELLC's material is available for you. I want to encourage that as you listen, share with others so that at least others can be not just blessed, but also grow. Because the goal, God's goal for every single thing he created was growth. From seeds to animals to us, he gave us this call. He said, fruitful, multiply, replenish, take dominion over the earth. But as we looked at the whole aspect of spiritual, growing in spiritual leadership, that will constantly be open to allow Christ to be the center of our life. We'll also constantly be open to pursue that aspect of love because the truth of the matter is it's easy to say I can love okay? but when it comes to applying it out of human strength is difficult but no wonder he kept saying he said to Paul my grace is sufficient for you so Jim Eric and Sandra I want to say thank you very much for your time uh, deliberating together on the round table on growing spirit in spiritual leadership. And as we've just finished celebrating Easter, his resurrection power, I pray that the resurrection power of Christ will constantly be embedded in us and that the world uh, will see that resurrection power working through us daily. As Sandra said, Eric said, and James said, spend time with him. So, Thank you very much for your time and uh, have a wonderful, splendid day. And thank you also for listening. And we hope to see you next month. <laughs>